I know Beyond Meat could uh, meet its match at the June uh, 20th meeting of Arch Rival and former part owner Tyson Foods. But so much of the stock has been sold short that I don't even know if it'll matter. Chewy's play on the subscription economy for one of the great trends of our era, the humanization of pets. The company's commissioned paintings of 40,000 pets lately. Wow, what a commitment. Ask the people who got in on that IPO, fabulous IPO. Uh, they're having fun. At the, at the same time, iconic household names are back in style. Procter & Gamble, Estee Lauder, PepsiCo, McDonald's, Disney, Starbucks. These are some of the most beloved companies, and they're turning into the most beloved stocks, just like they used to be for so long. Now, I know most of these are classic slowdown stocks. When they all move up together, someone, the wags are going to say a recession must be around the corner. However, at the moment, I think the strength has much more to do with the fact that they're well-run companies with huge buybacks, great balance sheets, good dividends, and are working. I know these household names aren't cheap. It doesn't shock me. Clark's expensive. But when a company has a fabulous brand and it's executing consistently, well, you have to pay up for best of breed. It's always been the case in real bull markets. Meanwhile, Merger Main is back. Today, Pfizer told us that it's buying Array Pharma. Hey, by the way, that's a frequently asked uh, stock in the lightning round. Thank heavens we've been positive. Pfizer needs a pipeline. Makes sense. Sotheby's got a nice bid today. I had another household name. Auction House has often been rumored as a target. Finally, uh, quite a suitor, a billionaire Patrick Drahi, who will take it private giving the company a lot more flexibility to do what it says it wants to do. Hey, listen to this. Most important, on top of all that, Fang feels like it's making a comeback. Let's go backwards in Fang. Alphabet's got a pulse again. It seeks to monetize YouTube. Netflix is finally moving after spending most of the year trading sideways in the wake of January's epic rally. Amazon's now up 25% for the year. It stocks trying to break out, helped by the RTH, which it dominates. That's the retail ETF, ETF. And the company continues its quest for total retail world domination. And Apple, Apple's defying the trade war with China, even as the company has to navigate both China and the United States. Yet for the past couple weeks, the stock has been on fire. Uh, and by the way, I think that Tim Cook's, uh, you, can, you, you should read his commencement address, makes a lot of young people, really. You should definitely read it. Finally, Facebook is the most interesting here, because tomorrow the company will issue a white paper about what it's going to do to help the unbanked get access to the financial system. It rallied more than eight points in anticipation of that white paper and the idea of an international cryptocurrency with real institutional backing and blockchain. Now, I know many of you snicker whenever I say anything good at all about Facebook, and with good reason. They're not exactly the paragons of moral rectitude. But right now, there are hundreds of millions of people who don't have bank accounts all over the world who live in countries with unstable currencies. Roughly 40% of the world lives in a country with a 10% plus inflation. Thank you, Lisa Ellis from Moth, uh, Mothinson. Oh, Craig. Uh, okay, it's uh, Moffat Nathanson. I knew it would come to me. Always does. Uh, Facebook wants to give these people access to a special kind of cryptocurrency called Libra. That's L-I-B-R-A. And that's backed by real players like Visa and MasterCard and PayPal. You know we like PayPal. I'm betting they'll make this service free to their 2.6 billion users as part of a genuine charm offensive designed to get the regulators off their case. Hey, you know what? Think about that. Hey, you know what? I know you guys are investigators, but we just give 2.8 billion people bank accounts. Isn't that a nice message? Of course, they're not doing out of the goodness of the heart. But uh, th that's neither here nor there. Finally, there's a whole new class of cloud computing stocks that have caught fire here. I mean, if you were in San Francisco, even... Hey, Regina, when we were in San Francisco, didn't you feel it? Regina? Didn't you feel the joy in San Francisco of all these companies? Yes, I did. There you go. I needed to I get a little verification of that. Very little verification. Let me think about it. We, we all know about Workday. They're all in the... How many times have we had Adobe? Not enough. Salesforce. We had Splunk, ServiceDown, VMware. Now that we've got these... Facebook. Maybe Facebook one day. But get this. Look, look, it's a small TV show. We do this stuff. Get this. You know what they're now people are talking about when I walk around? They want to know if they can get a job at Okta. They like Zscaler, Zendesk, Coupa, dozens of other companies that help businesses make themselves more effective. Plus, there's been consolidation. Last week, Salesforce bought Tableau's software. And now people are speculating that Alphabet may need to make a move. Write down those stocks I just mentioned. They are all possible targets. Uh, what do all of these winners have in common? They're fun. They're companies you know or could learn about. You can look at the tops of buildings. You can say, Okta, I got to know more about that. And you can happily buy them in, into weakness if you've done the homework and you believe in the prospects. The bottom joyous line, sorry, there's a whole different mindset. This idea that investing can be fun is a throwback, not to the dot-com bubble in 1999, but to the 80s and 90s. We had some incredible bull runs, and no one thought it was just horrible and stupid to like stocks. 
far as I'm concerned, it's not pernicious. It's not silly. It's not dangerous. Just how things were in the old days before things got corrupted by the 1999-2000 era. And if that's the case, well, guess what? The rally could last a lot longer than most people expect. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.